Windows Phone 7 also provides an embeddable web browser control that you can use in your applications to consume and display rich content from the internet. And that's what we're going to do in this lesson. We're going to build an application that uses the embedded web browser. And it's basically the same version of IE that is on the phone. All we're going to be doing is wrapping it in an application and then using it to go to some sites on the web. And this is a really neat feature because you can imagine that if you're building an application that uses HTML content that you've already developed for other purposes, let's say you have a website that has a whole bunch of content that you want to reuse in your mobile app, it's really easy to do so using the embedded web browser. And the embedded web browser also provides a way to listen in on events, such as when a document has completed loading or when it's about to navigate somewhere. And we will take a look at that in this example. So let's get started. I'm here in the Visual Studio IDE, and I'm going to open up my web browser project. And this is in the Exercise Files folder. You see there's two versions. There's the start version and the final version. And I'm going to be working on the start version, so you can follow along with me if you'd like, or you can go ahead and jump to the finished version to see how everything works. So I'm going to open up my start folder and open the web browser solution. So here we are in the IDE, and we're going to start by putting on some basic UI we're going to need to tell the browser to navigate. So let me make this area a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. So first, I'm going to bring out a text box. And the text box is going to be where we type our URL that tells the browser where to go. And I'm just going to resize this appropriately. And then I'm going to add a button to the canvas. And we'll just call this the Go button, make it a little bit larger. And I'll come down to the properties. And we'll change the content to just say Go. Resize it a little bit so it fits. There we go. So now we have our UI on the canvas for navigating. Now let's bring out the actual web browser itself. And that's down here in the toolbox at the way bottom. You see it's right there. It's called the web browser. And I'm just going to drag and drop that onto the canvas. And you can see that this is the box that the web browser will show up in. And at design time, you just get like a little logo. But at runtime, this will be replaced with actual web content. So let's just size this up so that it matches the rest of the controls. And that's pretty much all there is to do in laying out the UI. If we take a look at the XAML code that was produced, you can see down here in the grid, there's our text box, our Go button, and here's our web browser control right here. So pretty straightforward. So what we need to do now is give the web browser a default place to go to when the page loads. So the way that we're going to do that is by selecting it and then scrolling down in the properties window till we get to the source property. And we're going to have the web browser start off at one of my favorite websites, which happens to be HTTP www.lynda.com. And let's take a look back in the XAML code to see what happened. And we'll scroll over. And you can see that I've set the initial source property to be the address of this website. And just to make sure that everything is in sync, we'll do the same thing with the text box. So I'll click on the text box and set the text to be the same thing. HTTP www.linda.com. So now we've put the initial source property in the web browser. Now we need to wire things up so that when the user enters a URL and clicks the Go button, we properly go to the right website. So let's click on the Go button. And then over here in the properties, we're going to click the Events tab. And for the click event, we're going to create an event handler named on click go. So that will put us into the source code for the main page. So now we need to write the event handler. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a string variable and we'll call that site. And that will be the string that's in the text box for the website we're about to go to. We'll write site equals text box one. That's our text box dot uh, text. 
So we get the text out of the text box, and now all we need to do is navigate the web browser. So the web browser, which if I'm not mistaken, we'll start typing web. Yep, there it is right there, web browser one. The web browser has, surprisingly enough, a method on it called navigate. And we'll just scroll down until we see it, and that's right there. So the navigate function tells the web browser to go to a URI. So we're going to write new URI, and that's going to be the site, the string we just created. And the kind of URI, URI kind, is absolute. So we're going to make the user type in HTTP. Obviously, this is kind of a bare bones example. Well, I'm not writing any code here that checks to see if the user properly typed HTTP colon slash slash at the start of the string. You know, I could do a whole bunch of error checking here. I'm not doing that. This is just an example. But in a real browser, you'd have to do all these kinds of error checking things. So that's pretty much all we need to do to navigate the web browser. So let's save. And save the main page as well. And let's run this in the emulator and see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and start debugging. Uh, scale the emulator down so that we can see it all. OK, so we see that our application has launched. And the web browser is navigating. It's going to take a minute. And OK, see, there it is right there. All right, so you can see that the web browser navigated to the website. And it's kind of zoomed out to give the full view of the website. But the web browser control has interactivity that knows how to zoom in. So all I got to do, for example, is double click on this element right here. And you can see I can zoom in, and I can pan around the page, and I can zoom back out again. Now, let's make sure that our event handler is working correctly. So I'm going to write a different address. I'm going to type in, let's see, xbox.com, another one of my favorite sites. Click Go. And after a few seconds, we should see that there it is. So you can see that we've basically built a bare bones embedded web browser using the web browser control. But we can do a little bit better. Let's make it so that it's easier to type in URLs, and let's explore using some of the events that the web browser fires off. So let's stop the debugger, go back to the code, and we'll stop debugging. First thing we're going to do, if you haven't watched the chapter on using input scopes, you might want to watch that before this example. But what I'm going to do is use what we learned in the input scope lesson to fix the text box so that it's easier to type URLs in. What I'm going to do is make it easier to type in URLs into the text box. So the way that I'm going to do that is go back to the design view. This is the main page. And I'm going to select the phone application page. And you can see that here in the events property panel, there's a loaded event. And what I'm going to do is create an event handler named on page loaded. So when the page loads, we're going to create an input scope. And an input scope is a way of customizing the little virtual keyboard that pops up to be optimized for entering certain kinds of information, in this case, a URL. So we're going to customize the keyboard by writing input scope. Input, my variable is going to be input scope equals new input scope. And if you watch the previous lesson on input scopes, you'll know what I'm doing here. So input scope name, and we'll call this one input scope name equals new input scope name. Now we need to make the input scope a URL type. So we'll write input scope name dot name value equals input scope. And we see the IntelliSense is helping me out here dot name value dot url now that we've created the url input scope we just need to add it to the text box so we'll say input scope dot names dot add and we'll add the input scope name that we just created input scope name that's that guy right there and then finally we'll assign it to the text box text box one dot input scope 
equals the input scope variable we just created. So this will make it easier to enter URLs on the virtual keyboard. The second thing we're going to do is go back to the main page and let's take a look at some of the events that we can listen in on the web browser. So I'll select the web browser in the design view and we'll go over to the events panel here and we'll scroll down. Now a lot of the events you see are just basic control events that are supported by pretty much every control in Windows Phone 7, but there are a couple that are specific to the web browser. For example, this one right here, load completed. This event fires when the content in the web browser has finished loading. There's also a couple others. There's this one here, navigated, which means that the web browser control has finished navigating to a site, but this fire is before the load completed event fires. So in other words, you type in a URL, the web browser goes there, gets the content, fires navigated off, and then loads the content into the web browser and then fires off the load completed event. There's also a companion event for navigated called navigating, and this event is fired right before the web browser is about to navigate somewhere. And when you listen in on this event, you can control whether the browser actually goes there or you can make any changes to the URL that you want to, that kind of stuff. So let's just do a simple example. Let's just listen in on the load completed event. And that's this one right here. So I'm going to write an event called on load complete. And that'll put me back in the source code. And just to make things simple, we're just going to have a message box show up that shows us that this did indeed fire correctly. So we'll write message box dot show. And we'll write something like web browser has loaded the content. And we'll give it a title like content loaded. And we'll show a message box button dot OK. So that's all we need to do now to listen in on the load complete event. So let's save. And let's go back to the main page and save. And let's rerun the application and see what happens. Emulator is running. You can see that we're navigating off to the lynda.com site. And you can see that as the content is beginning to appear in the design view, the load complete event has fired. And it says the web browser has loaded the content, which is great. So let's take a look at our input scope. So when I click in here, you can see that the virtual keyboard has now been customized to show the little dot com button down here and the period over here. So if I was using the actual device and typing in an address on the keyboard rather than using my emulator here, it would be a lot easier for me to type things in. So for example, I can just write xbox and then just type dot com. And we'll click go. And once again, we should see the load completed event fire. There it is. That's a quick lesson on how to build an embedded web browser in your application. So now you know how to use rich web content in your Windows Phone 7 apps.